Most Google search campaigns don't fail because they were set up wrong. They fail because they're not being optimized properly after launch. In this video, I'm gonna show you the five optimization checks that we look at to get stagnant campaigns converting. Let's get into it. Okay, to properly optimize your Google search campaigns for your e-commerce store, these are the five things you need to be on top of. Your keywords, your ads, your ad assets, how you're allocating your budget, and your bidding strategy. Let's break them down one by one, starting with keywords. This is how people either win or waste a lot of money with Google search ads for their e-commerce store. Start by checking your keyword performance. You want to identify which keywords are actually driving conversions and which ones are just spending the budget without bringing in any results. But before you look into your dashboard and check out the results, you need to make sure that your conversion tracking is set up properly. That's what tells you how many real conversions you're getting, how much they're costing you, and what kind of return you're making. If your Google Ads conversions don't line up with your actual store's orders, your tracking is off and you're gonna to wanna to fix that right away. I've got a step-by-step -step video on how to set up conversion tracking. I'll leave that down below. All right, open up Google Ads and click on your search campaign. Now, let's talk about time frame. For most accounts, looking at the last 30 days gives you a clear, more stable view of performance. It evens out random spikes or drops and helps you spot real patterns. But if your campaigns get steady traffic and conversions daily, you can also look at the last seven days to catch any recent shifts. Okay, now under audiences, keywords, and content, select keywords. Next, sort your columns to show cost, that's how much you've spent, cost per conversion, your average cost to get a sale, conversion value, which is your revenue, conversions, that's how many orders you've gotten, and conversion value over cost. That's your return on ad spend. To do that, click on columns, then modify columns, and then add and arrange them in that order. Once that's in place, review your keywords. Look for the ones spending money but not bringing in conversions, or the ones with a high cost per conversion and low return. Those are your budget drains. In this example, we're looking at search campaign for a high ticket product. You'll notice one keyword has a cost per conversion of $83. Now, that may seem high at first, but it has already brought in a conversion value of $389. So, in this case, we'll keep the keyword. Why? Because it's still profitable. The return justifies the spend, but not every keyword with a high cost is worth keeping. What you want to do is regularly check your data, looking at both the last 30 days and the last seven days. Compare how your keywords are performing against each other. If some keywords have a much higher cost per conversion, and aren't delivering good results, it's time to pause them. That way, you can focus your budget on the keywords that actually drive conversions. Now, another thing to keep your eye on, especially if you're using manual bidding, is whether your keywords are below the first page bid. This means your bid isn't high enough for your ad to show on the first page of search results. When that happens, your ad gets less visibility, fewer clicks, and ultimately, fewer conversions. For example, let's look at this keyword right here. Google is telling us that our ad isn't showing for this keyword and it recommends increasing the bid to 30 cents. That makes sense, so I'll go ahead and apply the suggested bid. However, Google sometimes recommends bids that are too high to be profitable. For example, in this case, the suggested bid is $4.54, more than double my average CPC. When that happens, I usually increase the bid to somewhere close to or just about above my average CPC to test performance. If the higher bid still doesn't improve results or remains below the first page bid estimate, I consider pausing the keyword. Remember, adjusting bids isn't a one-time task. You should review your keyword performance regularly, ideally every week if you're running ads daily. After you've reviewed your keywords, the next step is to dive into your search terms report. This part is really important because it reveals exactly what people are typing into Google before they click your ad. And here's where many store owners get confused. They enter a few keywords into their campaign and assume their ads will only show if someone searches for those exact terms. But that's not how it actually works. Google matches your ads to a wide range of related search terms and many of those can be completely irrelevant to your products. To make sure your ads are reaching the right audience, check your search terms report. To do that, head into your search campaign. Then go to insights and reports and click on search terms. Scroll down and you'll start to see the actual search queries that triggered your ads. Now, here's the important part. Look for any terms that don't align with what you're selling. For example, in this campaign for a store that sells high ticket headphones, we see the search term headphone repair near me. That person isn't looking to buy new headphones. They're trying to fix an old pair, so this is not someone likely to convert. In this case, I'll select the term and click add as a negative keyword. You should do the same. Go through your search terms list and check what Google is showing your ads for. If the terms aren't relevant to what you sell, exclude them, but be careful not to exclude keywords that are actually valuable. Let's say you sell Christmas decor and you come across a term like Christmas event decorations rental. If you only sell products and don't offer rentals, that search isn't a good fit. So 
Instead of excluding the full phrase, just add rental as a negative phrase match. That way you block the irrelevant part without stopping your ads from showing for search terms like Christmas decor wall hangings. This keeps your ad focused on the right audience and helps you make the most of your budget. Okay, now that you reviewed your search term support, it's time to focus on expanding your keyword list. Here's a gold mine that you don't want to miss. Use the exact phrasing from high converting search terms to expand your keywords. This helps your campaign show up for the real language your customers are using. Look for terms in this list that are already generating conversions. You'll be surprised how many converting terms you never thought to add as keywords when you first set up your campaign. When you find those, add them to your keyword list. That way, your campaign will appear for more relevant searches and bring in more conversions. And here's the key, adding strong performing search terms as actual keywords gives Google more clarity and control. It helps the algorithm find similar high intent searches, improving both your reach and your conversion rates over time. So make it a habit to check this report weekly and use it to exclude irrelevant terms and add the high converting ones to your keyword list. All right, once you've looked over your search terms and fine tune your keywords, it's the perfect time to revisit your ads. So first ask yourself, are the words in my headlines and descriptions really matching what my best customers are searching for? This doesn't just apply to your ads. It's important for your ad assets too like call-out extensions, structured snippets, and site links. For example, if your top converting search term is minimalist leather crossbody bag, you want to update your ad to include that exact phrase like this. Headline, minimalist leather crossbody bags. Description, elegant, functional, handmade. Shop our collection today. Structured snippet, genuine leather. Adjustable straps, free shipping. At the same time, be sure to remove any headlines or descriptions that include keywords or phrases that aren't performing well. Then, let Google test the new assets you won't lose anything and you might gain better results by using language your customers actually use. Okay, so how often do you actually do this? Well, it depends on your traffic. If your campaigns get thousands of clicks a day, you want to review and update more often. If your traffic is lower, checking in every couple of weeks or monthly can work. The important part is to make this a regular step in your optimization process. Over time, you'll get a feel for which phrases or words resonate best with your audience. That insight will help you write stronger ads that convert. Next, let's talk about budget allocation. When your campaign is running well, the goal isn't to just spend more, it's to spend strategically. You need to give Google enough budget and data so its system can learn and optimize effectively. Ideally, your campaign should be set up to get at least 10 to 15 conversions per week. That's the sweet spot for the algorithm to do its best work. So for products priced between $50 to $150, that means starting with a daily budget of $20 to $30. Once your campaign is generating consistent conversions with a stable ROAS, you can then increase your budget. But don't jump too fast. A gradual increase of about 10% each time keeps things steady and avoids overwhelming Google's algorithm in the process. Now, here's where you can get even smarter about how you scale. Inside your Google Ads dashboard, there's a metric called search lost impression share budget. This tells you how often your ads could have shown but didn't because your budget was too low. To find it, open your campaign view, click on columns, then modify columns, and scroll down to competitive metrics. Now, select search lost impression share budget. If this number is low, say under 30%, keep increasing your budget slowly. Increase it about 10% at a time while monitoring performance. If this metric is 30% or higher, it means you're missing out on a lot of potential impressions because of your budget. In that case, it's okay to increase your budget more aggressively by 20 to 30%. This will help you capture more of that traffic and speed up growth. The key is to use this number as your guide. It helps you balance cautious scaling to avoid wasting money. At the same time, it unlocks growth by reaching more customers faster. Remember, your budget allocation isn't just about spending more, it's about spending smarter. All right, let's talk bidding strategies. If you launched your campaign using manual bidding, that's perfectly fine. It gives you control while gathering data. Once you've hit around 20 conversions, switch over to maximize conversions. That's when Google's smart bidding takes over and starts optimizing for you. If you didn't start with manual bidding and already have 20 conversions or more, that's okay. Just make sure to switch to maximize conversions. Here's how to do it. Inside your campaign, go to settings, scroll down to bidding, then click change bid strategy. From there, select maximize conversions and hit save. Now, once you've switched to maximize conversions, let it run for at least two to three weeks or until you've reached 30 to 50 conversions. That gives Google enough recent data to understand what kind of user is likely to convert. After that, once your cost per conversion is stable, go ahead and switch to target CPA. Set your target CPA close to your current average cost per conversion. This gives Google a clear goal to aim for. At the same time, it continues using smart bidding to bring you consistent, profitable results. And that's it, guys. 
That's how you optimize your Google search campaigns and set them up for optimal success. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And by the way, if your store is already doing 20K per month, reach out to my team and I down below. We can help you scale that to over 100K per month. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Make sure to check out our other videos. This one here might be especially useful for you.